Hi, and welcome to this presentation by Victrex. My name is James Myers, and I'm the Head of Research and Development for our Aerospace and Composite Technology team based at our Hill House facility in the UK. Today, I'm going to talk a little about the ascendance of thermoplastic composites and why now is quite an exciting time for the technology. So, I'll give a very quick introduction to Victrex for those of you who don't know us yet. Discuss some of the aspects of the thermoplastic composites technology, and let's be honest, it's been around for quite a long time now, so why the fuss? Cover some of the historic barriers to adoption, what's changed, and why now is such an important time in their evolution. Go through some of how Victrex helps support our customers and partners to adopt these te new technologies, and how we work with those customers to and partners to ensure that there is the right application for the right job. Because again, let's face it, these materials won't be suitable for everything. Also shine a bit of a spotlight on our new low melt PAEK material, which we and many of our customers and partners believe is showing real potential to help change the future of thermoplastic composites adoption. Who are Victrex? Starting at the top left, basically we're the world's number one experts in peak or polyether ether ketone materials and have been working in the space for over 40 years since the material was first invented in our days as part of ICI. We're also the number one manufacturers of polyaryl ether ketone family of materials, of which PEAK and LMP are both parts, with over 7,000 tonnes of nameplate manufacturing capacity. Not only do we make the polymer itself, but also forms of the polymer, and we're also moving into more part-based production with our partners and customers, so truly enabling a full designer's toolkit of materials. All of this for exploitation in our six main business groups, which I'll talk a little bit about shortly. In the bottom left, we're a business of over 900 employees spread across 40 countries with a rough market value of £2 billion. And looking to the bottom right is an area that I find really exciting about the business, our investment and innovation. We're significant investors into research and development with around about 5% of our annual sales being reinvested. To put that into context, the UK currently spends around 1.7% of GDP on research and development and has aspirations to get to 2.4%. So as a business, we're already significantly ahead of that aspiration. We also invest significantly in our infrastructure. In the past few years, we've spent just over £200 million in infrastructure in terms of expanded capabilities around our manufacturing capability, composites manufacturing, partnerships and acquisitions, additive manufacturing. We also invested significantly in the world's first and only um, industrial size scale up facility for our PAEK materials, our Polymer Innovation Centre. As I noted on the previous slide, we focus on six key areas. Automotive, aerospace, energy, medical, electronics and manufacturing and engineering, with over half a billion um, gears supporting our automotive applications, over 20,000 aircraft, relying on our material solutions for safety and application critical performance and over 4 billion mobile devices relying on our film materials to support their performance. Okay, so to the ascendance of thermoplastic composites and exactly as we talked about before, why the fuss? Why now? Why is such an important time in the evolution of these materials? So why the fuss? Let's be honest, composites have been around forever. Whether they be natural composites in the forms of trees or man-made composites in the forms of models. Composite materials and structures have been around for an awful long time. Equally, modern fibre reinforced polymer composites have been around for a long time now, dating back to around about the 1930s. Also, PAEK composites have been around quite a while now, from the mid to late 90s to the turn of the century in high-end applications. So why, when you have materials that exemplify great properties and performance like some of those on screen now, are these materials not everywhere? Fundamentally, they have historically quite challenging processing conditions, some of which due to high pressures and temperatures required in which to mould these materials, um, but also often the investment cost in the infrastructure and the materials themselves have provided a challenge to acceptance. So what's changed? The material itself, in some respects, hasn't changed dramatically over the past 40 years, but there have been incremental improvements and some more recent significant improvements in the material chemistry. The process technology in particular has really come on leaps and bounds in the past 20 years, with increasing levels of capability in the kit itself, coupled with higher degrees of automation 
and more recently with the introduction of technologies complementary to increased levels of data acquisition and management. All that combined with increasing levels of capability around the design space, whether that be through date, uh, material data development and utilization within the existing design practices, or the infrastructure and hardware itself, allowing aspects such as digital twinning to become a reality. All that coming together over the past years has helped to make the possibility for these technologies to get a real and consequential foothold in the sector. So what can Victrex do to help increase and enable greater adoption of these composites and other technologies? Would that be with our sales and technical services team working directly with development partners and processors, or our market development and key accounts teams working directly with tier suppliers and the OEMs Victrex can support throughout the entire value chain. So how have we helped some of our customers and partners in this area? Fundamentally, it comes down to the development of the right material and technology for the right application. Would that be managing cost and risk for subsea projects, providing significant weight savings and full life cost reductions in a certified product, operating, as you can see here, in some extremely harsh operating conditions, or development of technologies using our suite of materials to help develop technologies for low weight, high performance components within the aerospace sector. Fundamentally, the focus of ensuring the right material and technology combination for the right application remain the same. So I'd like to spend a little time going through our low melt poly owl ether keto material and why we and some of our partners think this could be such a game changing technology for thermoplastic composites. Our LMP materials are available in a number of different forms, but the material that has having particularly significant impacts at this point is our continuous fibre reinforced composite tapes. With a circa 50 degrees C lower processing temperature than comparable high performance thermoplastic materials, we're seeing significant potential improvements in infrastructure and setup costs, energy consumption and power production rates, all helped by a greater potential processing window for the process of choice. For example, in AFP, ATL, tape and fire placement applications, we're seeing some examples of deposition rates up to 20 meters per minute achieved for in situ consolidation with cost savings estimated in excess of $3 million per year and speeds in excess of 60 meters per minute proven in or out of autoclave and oven consolidation tape placed application with over $600,000 per year weight uh, cost savings um, in our application examples. Okay, so that's a brief introduction to some of our composite materials and how they're helping the industry to adopt thermoplastic composites. If you'd like to learn any more about our material applications and how we could assist you with your challenge, then please feel free to get in touch with us via the links within this post. Thanks for your time. And if you have any questions, please post below or alternatively get in touch with the team and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Stay safe, take care, and thanks again.